Stay tuned for Wednesday. One thing I've learned, don't step on your boss's lines, okay? <laughs> but all kidding aside, there's going to be a major speech laying out in understandable, clear terms what our administration wants to happen with regard to health care and what we're going to push for. Vice President Biden this morning at the Brookings Institution here in Washington, D.C., but will that speech be enough? We're literally going to do our best to step on President Obama's lines. Top line <laughs> starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABCNews.com's Top Line. I'm David Chalian here in Washington, D.C. And I'm Rick Klein in New York. Each weekday, we're bringing you the very latest political headlines, insight, reporting, analysis, everything you need and want to know about the world of politics. This is the place to come. And the place to keep that conversation going all day long is Twitter. It's twitter.com slash the note, which I can check even from the Big Apple. Excellent. Well, kick us off from the Big Apple. Rick, what's your top line? Joint session. President Obama fires the biggest bullet he had left in his chamber and convenes a joint session of Congress next week to talk about his case for health care reform. We're expecting more specifics, more particulars from the president, although it's unclear how far he's going to go. And now we have an entire week to, to, to set the expectations for it, David. <laughs> no doubt. As the president, of course, enjoys some last moments of vacation up at Camp David, so he doesn't have to play that expectations game just as aides do. Triggering compromise? That is the big question now. Is this idea idea of a trigger to a public option, something Olympia Snow, that Republican senator from Maine who's still playing footsie with the Obama administration is interested in, might this be the answer to calm the liberal left uh, of the president's base? We'll take a look at that. This is really one of the few areas where you can see compromise between those who say no public option and those who say there definitely has to be a public option. And no coincidence that Olympia Snow, really the last Senate Republican who's still talking to them, is a champion of this particular idea. Stimulus salesman Joe Biden previews the 200th day of the stimulus package by saying that things are working faster and better than the administration ever could have imagined with the stimulus. No surprise there, David, but it makes you wonder what it would be like right now in terms of unemployment and the economy if it hadn't lived up to and exceeded expectations. Really some, uh, some amazing rhetoric from the vice president. They are going to pump this uh, for the months to come. You heard the vice president say today that they're getting ready to unveil that massive new website uh, to continue to tout their success on this. Uh, they see it as a key to everything else in terms of gaining back public support. And Kennedy's memoir, yes, True Compass by Ted Kennedy, words from beyond the grave now, obtained by the New York Times. The book doesn't come out until September 14th, but the New York Times got a look at it. And Rick, as you know, he calls his behavior after the Chappaquiddick incident inexcusable. That's language we never heard from Senator Kennedy during his life. That's right. He rarely talked about it in public. No new details about that, that mysterious timeline. An, an incredible piece of history and the tidbits in there about the potential that his, his brother Robert would have tried to broker a peace in 1967 under LBJ's direction would have changed the course of history and a historical figure and, and really one of the few political memoirs I'm honestly excited about reading. Well, uh, ABC News has sent out many of our colleagues, Rick, hunting every bookstore to try to find a copy of our own. So hopefully we'll get to read it soon. Uh, we're going to begin with that huge health care debate, though, and the president setting the stage with that joint session of Congress address coming up next week. We are joined by the leader of the labor movement, Secretary Treasurer of the AFL-CIO, Richard Trumka, soon to be the new president of the AFL-CIO. Thank you, sir, for being here Good on there. the eve of Labor Day. Um, Thanks for having me on. Let me, uh, let me begin. You have been adamant about the public option being included in the legislation that the president signs. You, you, have, you have gotten to a place where I'm not really sure how you walk back from that if, if the deal doesn't include it in the end. So let's start with this idea of a trigger. Let me just ask this for you. Right now, there's a potential compromise out there. Olympia Snow is one talking about this. Agreeing. You need maybe a public option to bring down costs, to make sure coverage gets everyone. But let's see if the private insurance companies can do it on their own first. If they don't bring down costs by a certain amount, if coverage does not expand to 95% of a certain marketplace, then let's introduce the public option. How does that sound to you? Well, Trigger was a great horse. And, and I'm sure Dale uh, and Roy really like Trigger. Uh, does that mean it doesn't sound like a compromise? <laughs> well, they like the horse. Uh, let me make uh, just frame the, the debate about why I think the public option is so important. You know, right now, one every 30 seconds, an American declares bankruptcy because of medical bills. In, in our markets out there, 94% of the markets are considered highly concentrated. That means only a few companies dominate them. And they haven't been able to break that stranglehold that the insurance companies have on the healthcare industry. 
And there was a lot of talk about uh, death panels, and they, they came up with those. Well, there are death panels out there. They're called the insurance companies. Let me give you a little bit of information you probably haven't heard before. Between 2002 and 2009 and a half, I'm going to give you the denied claims by a couple of insurance companies, large ones in California. Between 2002 and 2009 and a half, the average claims denied per year was health net denied 31.09% of the claims submitted to them. Pacific Care denied 35.41% of the claims submitted to them, and Cigna declined 25.59% of the claims. Now, these are claims that doctors say people need okay. treatment. So how long, just hold on, Rick, let me just yeah. finish framing it, and then I'll go to, to trigger uh, with you. Look, unless we're able to push them to do something different, this is going to continue. People's health is going to continue to decline, and we're going to have a worse system. Costs are going to go up. We need the public option to force them to become more efficient, give more innovative, the, and to, to break that stranglehold that they have on health care in this country. Give us then the what if. If there is no public option in this plan, is this something then that you're going to be urging your members to, and, and lawmakers who are affiliated with AFL-CIO and support AFL-CIO, you're going to tell them don't support this bill? If, if it doesn't break the stranglehold that the insurance companies have uh, on the health care industry right now, yes, we would not support it. But do you concede that there are other ways to break that stranglehold? Oh, that we're happy to look at them. If, if they, in fact, will help us break that stranglehold that the insurance companies have on health care in this country, we'll gladly look at it. Okay, them. and so then what about perhaps this trigger that if, the, if it's apparent after the legislation is passed and initially enacted that the stranglehold is not broken, public option comes in because they say, Richie Trumka, you were right. We need this public option now. Well, I, and, it's, and it's built in there to come into the process later down the road. How far down the road? And what do we say to those people, the 35.4% uh, of the ones that get their claims denied by Pacific Air, what do we say between them? Is it 10 years down the road? Is it 8 years down the road? What do we say to every American that declares bankruptcy every 30 seconds because of this? Look, they have a stranglehold on the health care industry. We're, look, we're willing to look at all kinds of ways to break that stranglehold. We have to be convinced it'll break that stranglehold and it'll do it in real time. So to be clear, theoretically. It, it doesn't have to be then the, the public option immediately from your mind. There's other ways to get at that. I didn't say that. Until I, somebody can show me an option. Nothing you've that, seen then. Uh, nothing that I've seen yet that'll break that stranglehold, Rick. As soon as we see something, we'll gladly consider it. We'll, we'll consider anything that's out there. Unlike the Republicans who have said no to everything and said, trust us, the old system's great. Okay, but play this with me. The president comes to you and says, listen, Trumka, we are not going to get this passed. I do not have the votes to get this passed. And now are you going to tell me that you're going to turn your back on potentially 46 million people getting health insurance that don't have it now for the sake of this public option? Look, if, if it isn't real health insurance reform, 46 million people probably aren't going to get that insurance. We want a bill that will give them the insurance. It will drive down health care costs. It will improve the quality of health care because, look, the World Health Organization says that we're 37th in the world. And when it comes to longevity, we're actually 34th in the world. And when it comes to infant mortality, the U.S. is 33rd in the world. If it's the status quo or it's a promise of 8, 10 years down the road or something like that, our answer is going to be we need the health care reform now. We need insurance reform right now. That's what people ask for. That's what they're demanding. And we're going to fight to make sure that's what they get. I want to ask you a quick question on another subject, immigration reform. It's been a contentious issue. It looks like it's been set to the side a little bit in this, uh, this current session of Congress. But under your leadership of AFL-CIO, where do you see the path forward? Do you, do you intend to support the comprehensive immigration reform we've seen in the past? Or you worry that may be a threat to some of your members? No, I mean, we, we have a panel out. Uh, uh, it was uh, headed by a former Secretary of Labor. Uh, that I think is, is a perfect thing. It makes sure that people are treated humanely, that employers can't exploit people that come into this country, and it'll solve the problem. It takes care of my members, but more importantly, it takes care of the problems for the country itself. Richard Trumka, soon to be the president of the AFL-CIO. You'll be with President Obama on Labor Day in Cincinnati, uh, and then he addresses your members later in Pittsburgh. Thank you very much for being here, sir. We Thanks, appreciate David. it. Thanks, Rick. Take care. We're going to have more Top Line in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Jonathan Martin, J-Mart of Politico, coming up.